and I had one of the very first cameras that had it was a uh, it had this digital gain boost. So we we came in without lights. I just had one camera, and luckily the gods were with us. The batteries and the tape lasted long enough, and we got. 99% of it, and I've been able to preserve it. This May 7th of 1990, which was officially proclaimed Cab Calloway Day by then Mayor uh, of New York, David N. Dinkins, and is hosted by <coughs> Bill Cosby, who was just at the, you know, really on a roll. He was in his element. Uh, Bill is a, a real jazz man. If he wasn't a comedian, I'm sure he'd be a musician, you know, and he, he's a jazz guy through and through, and he was actually conducting the band at certain points during the evening, and he has a personal relationship with all the cats on the bandstand. This is the first graduating class of the new school jazz and contemporary music program, some outstanding stars who went on to greater and greater things, uh, members of Whitney Marsalis' Jazz and Lincoln Center or Orchestra. Uh, they got through there by hook and crook with their instruments, uh, like Walter, who, uh, Walter Blanding Jr., who had his uh, saxophone literally held together by rubber bands. And at, at a point in the film that you'll see, he was presented a brand new saxophone by Cap Calloway and the Yamaha Corporation. So we got a, a lot to show you. I don't want to burn up too much time talking because we got a lot to show you. <coughs> we do it. And Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Yeah. 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 Loose because occasionally maybe we're going to intercede and just make a little voiceover to, to guide us along. And you know, as, as John has said, you know, it's pretty amazing that the production quality is as good as it is. But remember that this is just a handheld camera. And, jumps around a little bit. Sometimes there's a queue of photographers right. up the front and they're jostling. Him. But basically, you know, there's magic moments here that nobody's ever seen. And that's what we're introducing yeah. you here. I did very little editing because, really, I didn't do any. Because it's just uh, the way it went down because so much of it was so precious that I didn't want to cut it out. So bear with us. I mean, this is just really as it went down. So you're going to relive it. And uh, I was telling Martin before, we open the doors. The spirit of Arnie Lawrence is right here in the house tonight, you know, because uh, without Arnie, this definitely wouldn't be possible. And before we get started, I also want to recognize that there's, you should know, if you don't already recognize some of these folks here, we have some of the really important, uh, strong contributors, early contributors to our school here. So I've got to mention a few folks. First of all, we have Jimmy Owens, uh, one yeah, of our Yeah. Uh, a bunch of, he, he somehow, he liked us, I guess. 
<laughs> he knew that we represented the community. Yes. Paul Swartz yes. is here. Yes. Back right behind there is another member of our early board. This is James Jordan and his wife Nancy. Really great to see you. And here another early member of our board, David Berger, is here. Okay. David Berger and his father, I hope some of you do know, uh, were very close to Milk and Mona Hinton and have worked as book executors of all their uh, state and their photographs. Uh, producers of the wonderful documentary, uh, Keeping Time is called, Keeping Time, just an incredible, another film so filled with joy, uh, you know, all of the spirit of Jazz on a, uh, 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 Jazz on a Summer Day and um, Great Day in Harlem, that, that kind of vibe. Uh, so if you ever get a chance to see that, that film, it's just beautifully hard. But of course, uh, with all your connections to Milk and all the other circles, Milk figures very prominently in this film as well. We're going to go right into it. Go back to the three years. I showed you the, some of you, this is the one of the beacons in jazz metals. And when Cap got it, he put it on, and this thing's heavy. So he was dancing the higher you <laughs> And other than that, we just have a few little pieces of ephemeral, you know, optics from these things, like the original program. So that's why having this captured on film is really important. So let's watch a little bit of jazz history. So we want to start, William, I'm going to have to talk to William to help you on some of the stuff from time to time. We want to start right at 6.30 in the end of the thing. Okay. Okay. So we're going to pick it up where Cosby introduces Phil Schaap, and then Phil Schaap introduces Cosby, and off they go. Cosby's no introduction, but I think he deserves to hear an accolade right now. I'd like to bring him back on. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Um, one of you uh, who have not seen Phil, he shaved. <laughs> the only problem doing radio, Phil had a full growth beard. And I, I asked him, I said, why did you shave? Because there's two things that you do, human beings do, and they have a reason. And that is women cut their hair for a reason. And men shave for a reason. And he said he didn't know why. <laughs> so. Well, all of the people in the Survivors Band, please come up here, or else this is it. <laughs> Cab out there. Cab, where were they when you last saw them? <laughs> You're a piano player. You, you sit there. That's, Should not sit that close to the truck. 
trumpets because you all have more reins than the trumpet. And you're gonna make him look bad. So sit in the back. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you. 